All right, let's let's go ahead and dive into our uh, real quick CFB Week Six preview. And every week, I ask Chris four questions about the upcoming weekend. Uh, I've got a a few answers myself on this, but Chris, tell me about the best games of the weekend. Now, it, I'll go ahead and knock off two of them. Okay, Penn State, Iowa, we got that one. Oklahoma, Texas, it, everybody's talking about Red River. We get that too. Give me give me other games that may not be completely, totally on the radar that you think are going to be massive games this weekend. Uh, the Ole Miss-Arkansas game is going to be one of the funnest games of the weekend. I think those are two evenly matched teams. I think they're really, really, really close. I think they both have been looking dominant and unbelievable. And then I think last week they stepped in front of freight trains. Yes. Yes, I agree. I, they, those two teams are like, like the Spider-Man meme. Right now, where they're pointing, yep. like it's two Spider Men pointing at each other. Like they play uh, a three-two-six defense. Both of them like to like to kind of run base out of that. I I don't think we're going to see a ton of explosive plays in this game. Like this is, I, I would expect a lot of points, but I don't expect a ton of explosive plays over the top or anything like that. So it should be very interesting. Another one that I've got down here. You may not think it's a a big game or the best game or whatever. I think well, I got two others too. So oh, do you? give me yours. All right, give me. I'll, no. I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and toss mine. Wyoming at Air Force. I think it's going to be fantastic. Uh, Craig Bowl is four and two straight up against Air Force since he's been at Wyoming, and he used to coach the triple option at North Dakota State. Like he knows how to defend Air Force, and this is always a close game. So I, I expect that one to be uh, a whole lot of fun, especially for for men that like old man football like myself. So. So my other one is going to be an afternoon game. Boise State going to BYU. Boise already with two losses. I think this is a team that is desperate. They have to put up a good show in here. Or they were going to get blown out of this game. I don't think they'll get blown out. I think it'll be a close game. I think it'll be a good game. And then my other one, Brett Bielema gets to take on his old team for the first time ever. He gets to coach against Wisconsin. It's got them coming to his place. I don't know that Illinois, there's nothing that anything Brett can do to keep Illinois in this game. But I'm interested to see Brett play as old team. I I can agree with that. I can certainly get with that. Uh, Boise State, by the way, you said had two losses. If I'm not mistaken, they yeah. got three, right? So they lost. Oh to, shit! Maybe they do have three. Yeah, they got UCF. They lost to Nevada last week, and uh, and they lost oh, to Oklahoma yeah. State. Yeah, and they lost to OK State. Yep. Yeah. No, they they do have three. You're right. I missed. I forgot about the UCF game. That was so long. That was week one. As far as the team with the most to gain, I have one. Do you have a team with the most to gain this weekend? Kind of, yes. You want me to go first? Yeah, go ahead. I, I'm curious to see yours. Mine is Utah. The Utes do not have a Pac-12 loss yet, and they are playing significantly better. They're coming off of a bye, heading to USC. And they're a dog in that game, aren't they? Yeah, they're a three-point dog. Um, and I, I think they've played That's better dark. with Cam Rising at quarterback. Uh, the team, like on defense, the defensive numbers are actually not bad. If you go back and look at how they lost to San Diego State and to BYU, those things are fixable. And if they got them fixed in the bye week, you know, they, they did not destroy, but they, they beat pretty soundly uh, a decent Washington State team before the bye week. I, Utah, I mean, they could be setting themselves up for a Pac-12 run here. So, the, 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 I, I've got a, I got kind of a, I'm cheating a little bit. I don't have a team, but whoever wins the Penn State-Iowa game will have won the weekend. Yes. Because they'll be 6 and nine, And I think, I know Ohio State doesn't have a conference loss, but from what I've seen of Ohio State, and even Michigan, who I like a lot, I think that team will have a chokehold on the division, on the conference, I mean. Now, Penn State wins it, maybe not, because Penn State and Ohio State are still pretty good. If Iowa wins it, that they are moonwalking themselves to Indianapolis. Yeah, no, I don't think you're wrong on that. Don't think and I think they're there. getting Indianapolis undefeated from that point after they get by Penn State. I think it's I just think it's smooth sailing from there. As far as a team with the most to lose, I have got UTSA, UT San Antonio, uh, all of the hype that they have built up with this four and start. So they're a dog also. And they That's are one a of dog. My big underdog pick this week. Yep, they are a dog on the road at Western Kentucky. I think they have the most to lose if they cannot go on the road and get this thing done. Now they can still go eleven and one. They can still go ten and two, whatever, and that's still a fantastic season. But right now there are dreams and aspirations of twelve and uh, all this talk about UTSA. 
kind of starts to wind down if they end up getting a loss to the Hilltoppers. Uh, who uh, Who is your team with the most to lose? So I'm staying in the Big Ten with this. If Nebraska gets beat by, I mean, if Michigan gets beat by Nebraska, then then all that we may have seen from Michigan might be fraudulent. And and as, as good as they've been, not trailing an entire game, we wonder, and we look at their schedule and we see, and we wonder how good are some of those teams that they played. And and if they can't go on the road and, and face Big Red, then then I think that's going to be a problem. I think they've got a lot to lose. That's You know what's funny? I actually have Michigan as my playoff sleeper. You get past Nebraska. This is a good Nebraska team. They have improved from the beginning of the season until now. Nebraska's 5-1 and one against the spread thus far uh, this season. Only Only did not cover in that first game. But uh, Michigan, you know, you get through this, you can start thinking like you did a few years ago when, you know, you went into Ohio State with basically a playoff berth on the line. So I, I think that that could be a sleeper that, you know, it's not being talked about a ton, but, yeah, Michigan wins well, they still got to get by Penn State. Yeah, I mean, they got to they, they, I mean, there's still a bunch of landmines on the schedule, don't get me wrong, but I, I do feel like, you know, you get past Nebraska here and, you can maybe start having some some thoughts of a much bigger season than anybody anticipated. Who uh, who's your playoff sleeper? I mean, I don't have a playoff sleeper. I mean, everybody at the top is 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 there, and they're all big name programs, and they're all supposed to be good. So yeah, I, I tend to agree. I tend to agree. Hey, what about how crazy would this be? Uh, Arizona State, if if they go through the rest of their schedule undefeated, you know, you got the one loss at BYU. It was really crazy. You know, late night game bunch of penalties, you beat yourself. Is Arizona State basically already out of this thing? Or if they go through and smash everybody in the Pac-12, like you think they'd get a shot at this? Well, BYU is undefeated. Somebody's going to have an argument for saying, hey, well, is the Pac-12 better than the schedule that BYU played? And then BYU beat them head-to-head. So yeah. what what are we talking about? At that point, it, it depends on if BYU is undefeated. And I, I just... I cannot believe it. Well, but now we're, we're assuming that, we, you know, I, I would say this. I would put better money on BYU going undefeated from this point than Arizona State going undefeated. And I don't even know Arizona State's schedule. Arizona State's still got uh, Washington, Oregon, et cetera. And, yeah, I think BYU's already kind of gone through the uh, the rough part. But they do close yeah. with uh, – BYU does close with USC. So, not that that's, you know, exactly an intimidating game by any stretch of the imagination, but – there's it's still something out there. Still something out there. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.